We're calling this concert Checkmate, since it features three very different composers, Janáček, Mahler and Dvořák, who were all born in Bohemia. Leos Janáček lived from 1854 to 1928. His modern reputation rests mainly on his operas, including The Cunning Little Vixen, Yenufa, and From the House of the Dead. But during his lifetime, Janáček was known much more for his instrumental music. He wrote his most characteristic music at the end of his life, so despite his dates, he's much more a 20th century composer than his two Czech compatriots on this program, Dvořák and Mahler. Janáček's music often works by contrasting blocks of different harmony. Frequently he uses whole tone scales and the modal music of his native Moravia, piling up repetitive blocks of music in a very 20th century way. His two best-known orchestral works are the Sinfonietta, written for an outdoor gymnastics festival, and the tone poem we will perform on this program, Tarash Bulba. Janáček was deeply interested in Russian culture. Several of his operas are based on Russian folklore. He composed Tarash Bulba between 1915 and 1918, basing it on a novel by Nikolai Gogol. The story concerns the 1628 war between the Cossacks and the Poles, and the events surrounding the death of the Cossack leader, Tarash Bulba. Janáček dedicated the score to the Czech army. The first movement is entitled The Death of André, Tarash Bulba's son, whose love for a Polish girl causes him to fight against his own people. At the opening of the movement, we hear an English horn solo representing André's love, while the organ and orchestra represent the Cossack townspeople watching the impending disaster unfold. The movement ends with André's death at the hands of his own father, Tarash Bulba. The second movement, the death of Ostap, describes the death of Tarash Bulba's second son. Ostap is captured by the Poles, who dance a mazurka and torture him. Janáček depicts the torture with a lurid E-flat clarinet solo. Finally, the third movement paints a picture of the prophecy and death of Tarash Bulba himself. Tarash Bulba has avenged his son's death, but has been captured and sentenced to death by burning. We hear a nostalgic love theme and some typically Janáčekian cartoon-like dance music. The coda depicts Tarash Bulba's vision of his nation's future triumph, establishing him as a national martyr. For this final scene, Janáček composed one of the most bizarrely quirky and poignantly beautiful themes in all Czech music. Despite spending most of his career in German-speaking Central Europe, Gustav Mahler was born in Bohemia. He had a close relationship with song throughout his career, often using songs he had composed previously as the basis for his symphonies. Friedrich Rückert lived from 1788 to 1866, an editor and professor of medieval languages and a German lyric poet. Between 1901 and 1902, Mahler set a series of his poems. The result is less a song cycle than, say, a set of Schumann Lieder, more a group of five independent but related songs that are nonetheless usually performed together. The first song, Blicke mir nicht in der Lieder, enjoins the listener not to analyze the composer's songs, but to simply enjoy them. Ich atmet einen Lindenduft means I breathed a gentle fragrance. Mahler's melody miraculously conjures the smell of a lime spray. The third song, Um Mitternacht, is the longest. It's a description of romantic yearning to understand the longings of the soul at the spiritual hour of midnight. The next, Liebs du um Schönheit, was the last composed and the most traditional in form. Mahler wrote it as a gift to his wife, Alma, who was in distress. Sometimes she felt madly in love with Mahler, at other times she felt nothing. Mahler noticed that something was not right with his wife and reacted in his own way, composing a song for her. He designated his setting as Privatissimum to you. 
The essence of the song is contained in its final lines, love me for love, not for youth or beauty or riches. The final song, Ich bin der Welt abandoned gekommen, is especially beautiful, describing the romantic artist's sense of separation from the world. I am lost to the world with which I used to waste so much time. These words could have been written by Mahler himself. After an orchestral introduction, the words and music evoke the peace achieved through the poet's withdrawal from the everyday turmoil of the world and his absorption in the most meaningful and central aspects of his life, his heaven, his life, and his song. For these performances, we are joined by the wonderful English mezzo-soprano, Jennifer Johnson. Jennifer and I met at the Salzburg Festival last summer when she was singing in Richard Strauss's opera, Die Liebe der Danai. And I'm looking forward to welcoming her here in Jacksonville. Nature is never far away in Dvorak's music. Famously the son of a rural butcher, he grew up among Bohemia's woods and fields, never forgetting the sounds of local folk music and the feeling of being in the countryside. Dvorak wrote his sixth symphony in 1880. He was 39, and although well known, he had not yet achieved the world fame he would in later years. For me, the 6th, 7th, and 8th symphonies are Dvorak's masterpieces. There is a wonderful spontaneousness, lightness, and maybe even naivety that is lost in the much-loved Ninth Symphony from the New World. The first movement epitomizes this ease and lightness of style. Over a rocking accompaniment in the strings, we hear an incredibly simple melody of a rising forth and a gently ascending theme that seems to contain all the grandeur of life itself. The second movement is a meandering improvisation on a recurring theme. Again, music we could imagine outdoors in the heat of summer. The third is a furiant, a wild Czech dance characterized by syncopated cross rhythms. You might recognize this style from Dvorak's famous sets of Slavonic dances. The finale begins with a D major melody in the strings that is indebted to the finale of Brahms' second symphony. Brahms was a great supporter of Dvorak's, and we can hear Dvorak's admiration of his work here. The sense of spaciousness again recalls the outdoors. The symphony concludes with a quick coda, ending this underrated work with brilliance and nobility. Mm -hmm. 